is about here, motorcycle here in particular. Uh, before we get, I'm, I'm going to start off by introducing who will be there today. Uh, Renka first. Uh, she's, uh, she, we used to ride together, now she rides alone. Uh, and uh, I promised myself this time I wouldn't uh, make that blunder that I did. Uh, <laughs> so that's Priyanka. Uh, Aditya. Aditya is marketing for a Indian brand. It's a well-known brand. Uh, I can't say which one, but yeah, <laughs> he does uh, head the marketing. And the reason we've got him here is because he's got the uh, knowledge, the local, you know, on-ground knowledge of what gear is, how it's supposed to be. Uh, some of the interesting parts that he's going to talk about is the uh, labeling and you know, certifications that are so important before, I mean, none of us really look at it. So it's interesting, we'll, we'll hear from him. Uh, before we get on to all the going parts, I'm going to start off with two of these videos. I think the left one is a little wild. A lot of people have seen this. If you've not, this is an interesting one. We'll tell you how important it is. How things can go wrong. So that's one. Uh, I mean, I took it off Instagram, so I guess the rider is okay and the bike is also okay. <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, this is my fault that happened just last week. Uh, very small trip. I had a bike to roll over. Uh, luckily, nothing happened. But uh, again, it's it's how important gear is. Uh, if I was to tell you what I was wearing here, it would be the toe layer that was there. Uh, I did have a full tumble and uh, my back fell first. Uh, but I think uh, we all know how, how at times you don't know what can happen, what can go wrong. But uh, it saved me. Uh, so I think this is, this, this is the whole purpose of this session. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll move forward. Uh, this is Priyanka Bhiraditya again, the three of us. Yeah. Uh, safety, safety gear, I think we're going to let Aditya in one minute. Yes, uh, so guys, uh, this is the first part of this uh, presentation is to set the expectations right. So I'm going to ask a question and raise your hands if you are, if, if it's your answer. So the gear that we are seeing here, uh, raise your hand if you think it is safety gear. Okay. And now raise your hand if you think it is protective gear. Okay, so we are largely undecided in the audience. So I want to tell you the difference between what is quali what qualifies as safety gear and what qualifies as protective gear. Okay. So safety is about complete elimination of risk. Yeah. So um, it's complete freedom from occurrence of injury and complete elimination of risk. That's safety. Okay, it's, it gets a little technical before it gets a bit more fun. Um, then protection is about mitigation or reduction. So it's about reduction in the risk of injury and bringing down the risk to an acceptable level. So that's protection. Okay. So a few examples of safety here. So when a rock climber uses a harness, if the manufacturer of that harness tells him that if and when you take a fall, we will reduce the risk of injury to you, but we don't guarantee that you will be completely safe. Right? The rock climber will not use that harness. Right? He will use that harness only if the manufacturer says this is a safety harness, and if and when you fall, we will guarantee that you will not injure yourself. Right? That and the harnesses that rock climbers use are rated to that level of safety and that's why they are called the safety harness. So, uh, why is this called safety equipment? This is called safety equipment because the circumstances or the applications under which this equipment is going to be used, under those applications, the risk of injury is completely nullified. When someone's wearing this, for example, like he pointed out, when, when the high-rise workers are wearing uh, safety harnesses, um, they are not dangling from it, but in case they face a fall, right, they will not be injured at all. They will be safe. Right, they will be completely safe. Um, we don't see this very often in India, but all of us have seen this at least on television where uh, cops are wearing high visibility clothes, 
um, and even their vehicles are painted in high visibility colors. Right? This ensures that they are completely visible to the vehicles that are behind them. They are noticeable. And therefore, the possibility that somebody will crash into them or bump into them because they don't notice them is completely limited. Right? So this is a safety feature. We do have safety features in protective gear. You will see it here as well. For the daytime use, you have high visibility gear. Right? This is to protect you before the crash so that you don't enter a crash because somebody doesn't see you coming from. You see, motorcycles are the smallest vehicles on the road. Yeah. So uh, a lot of accidents take place because four wheeler or truck drivers don't notice two wheeler uh, motorcyclists. Right. So high visibility gear will keep you safe from visibility point of view. Okay. The point that I was trying to make is that the gear that we typically use, apart from reflective and high visibility elements, there is no. It's not a safety gear. It's protective gear because. The gear is designed to reduce the risk of injury to you in case of a fall. The gear does not completely assure you that you will not be injured. But the difference between getting into a crash while wearing gear and not wearing gear can be the difference of life and death. Yeah. So therefore, it is very important to get the correct gear for the correct application for the correct kind of motorcycle riding you are doing. Cool. So. Um, there's a few things that all of us do right, and there's a few things that we go wrong. Including, uh, I might look at a jacket and say, this looks good. I put it on, and uh, that's it. There's nothing, there's, there's no next step to it. So here are a few things that we think, you know, personally even I think it's very important. Good gear should be comfortable <coughs> in a wide range of situations. One of the things that I, I see myself also doing is uh, pants. You wear the pants, but all you do is you start walking out with it, you go to the middle seat. Most of the time what you're going to do with that pant is sit uh, on a bike on that position for long. You don't know what kind of lighting conditions you're with. Uh, what is the type of bike that is you've taken? And there's gear that is meant to it. Again, if you look at some of the leathers that you see, they always have that a knee bent. You know, and that's how it's supposed to be. So you're sitting on a street, on a street bike or a bike, and you're going to be in that position for long. So all of the, those are the things that you, know, you should be worried about, you should be thinking about before you make that purchase. So to be comfortable, it should help you be a better rider. Uh, fit well. Uh, fit well in the sense, I mean, there's, there's a lot of times you'll see things that are longer, and uh, the only thing that goes wrong is your knee guards, your hip guards, all over the place. So when you're sitting on a bike, you sit there and you start adjusting and seeing where that is sitting. Uh, gear is supposed to be to you, not a general thing. There are a lot of people who can wear a medium and you know every all the gears are the right place. You wear large gears all over the place. So it's comfortable, it should fit well, it should be snug, uh, it should not be a distraction. Uh, I mean if you're sitting there going, adjusting everything, that's one thing wrong that you're doing. Uh, it should just help you uh, make your life safer. Uh, Intended purpose, protection. Uh, be your second skill. Uh, you're you're going to be battling rain, uh, mud, debris, things flying over you. Uh, so you've got to be worried about such things. So that's something that generally you could get to do. Alright, uh, my accident. So I'm going to ask people, how has gear really saved you? In this bunch, has gear really saved you, know, you from an accident? You you got up and you said, you know what, this this is healthy. So I mean, if somebody can just uh, tell their story, I'm going to do this as well. safe 
but it protect me in a very means that was almost a death situation yeah. where I was crashed. So you so so the gear, the protection, the yeah, yeah, yeah. it all helps. It all comes up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run this through what has happened here. Okay, so if you see my that is my right side of the knee, and there was a bus that went straight from the front, so it lost it lost the foot and it, it scraped the whole side of it. It's a red colored bus, <laughs> if you can see it. Uh, me, uh, I had you know, shoes that were, sorry, it's the other way. I had shoes you know, covered, covering my shin. Uh, that's my arm, so it's all torn from the side. So nothing happened. I was, I came back, we reached, the guy I went to the hospital, he looked at me, he looked at me, he's like, I don't know how you, you know, how this happened. Uh, you, won't, you, won't, you won't believe this. My knee was safe. The heat pack that hit me, it went inside the tank, and the tank got hit because of my knee and that direction. So, I mean, it's, I always believe uh, protection is something that is, you, you don't know when you need it. So this is one of the things that I uh, am I'm a firm believer, born for it, so yeah. So better to have it than not, and good gear will should protect you, abrasions, armors, with impact on your guns. That's exactly what it happened. All right, so I'm going to go through uh, the things that you need to individually. Uh, we'll start off with jackets. You want to go through? Yeah? Um, so, uh, we put uh, two very fine gentlemen on top. That's great and it's are wearing the jackets and I'm using the tab to jacket. And uh, well, the points are outlined for you. They have to be high quality textile jackets, resist abrasion as well as, uh, you know, if they are of leather material. Uh, water resistant membranes. So this jacket, the one that I'm wearing, I've had it for about four years and I have worn it in extreme cold, I've worn it in heavy, heavy rains. Uh, many of you all know we've gone most of the time for monsoon rides and uh, not a single drop of water has ever penetrated the jacket. Uh, just the placement of the, the way uh, the zipper liner is, just the way uh, all the pockets are, all the, all the available vents are, you know, for, for hot riding. The way they seal properly in these in these conditions is excellent. There's a flap over it, so just small, you know, design details. Uh, the way it seals around your neck so that the water doesn't seep in. So I I uh, trust in this jacket 100 percent. Textile jackets are more affordable. Uh, leather is more durable, but not adjustable for comfort in all kinds of weather, especially on our side, the west coast, you know, and this side, which is more hot and humid. Uh, leather is, I, many people are comfortable, not comfortable, or the weather alone can become wearable or unbearable. I've not used it, so I cannot really personally say for it, I, but I have used uh, a leather suit on track in Chennai in peak uh, May leather, and uh, not, not, the, not the kindest situation to be in. Uh, should fit snug and let your arms move freely. I can attest to this because when I started riding, actually when I started uh, going pale for the first two years, I we would tour extensively. Uh, gear for, I won't say gear for women, because that is a niche, but gear for just women's fit, like a small or a medium or an extra small in some situations, was just not available. Most most stores or most OEMs don't stop it simply because they don't have the volumes for it or they don't make it. Uh, so I used to initially make do with medium or small in the unisex range. Uh, although it fits and then you know you take the velcro and you strap it till its very last point and you 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 try to fit in it, that's okay, but your armor doesn't remain in the right place. So it has to be snug. You know, if there's a shed, uh, shoulder guard, it has to be on your shoulder. It should not be loose that you just adjust a little bit and it moves. So just a couple of slides before, there was a point that said it, it's for the purpose of protection. So if you're wearing ill-fitting gear, it's like wearing very, very loose ill-fitting clothes. You're almost floating in it. And if you're riding, you're constantly, you, you don't feel like you're wearing a second skin. You're just feeling like you're floating in something. It's not really protecting you. It's a distraction. So that's that was my initial experience where my gear just wouldn't fit. I'm wearing it for the sake of wearing any kind of crash protection. Uh, choose a jacket as for the kind of bike you're riding and the riding position. 
I would even add writing style because uh, I can recommend, hey, this this jacket and pant work for me, but then it may not be comfortable to someone else. Some people may find uh, the gear I'm wearing very heavy or too light or too uh, too breezy, too much mesh or leather is not friendly to them. I may like leather. So definitely try, test, see the kind of writing you do. Uh, some people go entirely in dirt, some people will say that, hey, I'm just a tarmac rider, I just go to office, I just like highway riding. For them, there is now purpose built gear and more importantly, there's a wide range. So you can pick and choose from that. Uh, kind of weather you'll be frequently riding in and uh, jackets with zippers and its benefits. This one very important because I also had gear with the, you know, we are in rough situations, you are getting on the bike, getting off, this, that, constantly doing this, we make stops, we we, uh, we are riding over a few days. Just the small quality of small items like the zipper, the, the fasteners and everything, the reflector strips, all of those small details make a huge difference. And if you see in any of the weather resistant gear, you will see that, um, I don't know what the material is, but you know, it seals up completely and then goes in the pocket. So the water will not penetrate the pocket at all. That will, yeah. yeah. So, so just the small things make a lot of difference. <laughs> so, um, uh, not one of my brightest moments and too many of these. So, um, I used to I used to have riding denim and I'm one of those who falls in the category of short people and the pant goes on forever, then we fold it and then we lift the knee guard and then it's in somewhere here. But that's all okay when you're standing or when you're wearing the gear at home. When you are actually on your bike or you see a, a situation where you may or may not recover from it or there's a crash or something, the first thought is not let me put all my protection right where it's supposed to be. So those challenges are there. It is still tough sometimes to get the right fit. But again, after I would say the last two years or three years, there's been a lot of gear that is built for, I won't say shorter people, but at least they have all the guards. Uh, the pant that I'm wearing is a Komini uh, pant. So in that, the knee guard, uh, you can place it, there are three Velcro straps. So you can actually pull it up and seal the Velcro strap where you want the knee guard to be. So it won't even shift, but at the same time, you can make it higher or lower, right? Uh, I make sure that the, these, these are actually touring pants, these are not motocross pants, but so I make sure that it goes over my boots, I'm able to seal the zipper properly, uh, and they are not flared out too much. I used to have pants where they used to flare out and I'd fold it double in like with jeans and it was just absolutely ridiculous. It felt heavy, it felt like there's something at my ankle weighing me down. Uh, one mistake I used to often make is, I used to take the hip guards off. So, Typically you get just those foam inserts which come standard with the pants and uh, we didn't have D3O and all those separate inserts before so I used to neglect that like, as long as the knee guard is there what's the big thing uh, and also the foam insert what happens is that it bends so when you're, you know you go out you're wearing you're taking it off it bends it loses shape it tears fast so I never gave any importance and also I wanted to waste women but when I started falling from the bike all the time and getting purple bruises on my side, I realized I needed protection. There is a purpose why that pocket is over there and that is why I started investing in proper inserts. And it lessened my, my uh, I would not say I was injured but then of course I would be sore and there would be uh, muscle injury or uh, I mean if it's a very hard crash which I that would never had till day, but if it, if it is, you're going to risk breaking your hip bone and maybe a lot worse. So, make my mistakes, learn from that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, with riding pants. Um, make sure they are abrasion resistant. Uh, you get all, you get textile, you get leather. Uh, if you are using motocross pants, you get really good quality ones, but then you have to put your knee guards in it to make sure that they fit properly. If you're going to wear the right denims nowadays, they come with the inserts in it. So make sure that you put the right inserts also, which are fit for those particular pants. Uh, I think a while ago we would get those with just, just you know, like a placeholder in it. Now we get uh, the the crash protection to put. So if you want to replace it from the stock parts, you can do that as well. 
and uh, yeah, very important, wear them, try to squat, sit, see whether it's extremely comfortable. Uh, another important thing that I learned with riding pants is, you are in a showroom, there's AC, you try the pants on, you feel extremely great. Now say for 12 hours in those pants, you know. So uh, when you're riding for very long, your body changes, you, you know, your, some, when you're in your feet spread like this, that it has to be extremely comfortable for the duration that you're planning to ride and the kind of riding you're planning. Uh, I think I'll go to this one. So boots are the most important. The first, I believe that it's uh, the first impact against your hand. I, this is the second thing that goes wrong, which is your ankles. Uh, before you buy a shoe, uh, figure out how heavy your bike is, and then you figure out if those shoes you're wearing will take that impact if you're going to fall. Uh, your boots go through uh, lane, they go through water, they go through mud. Uh, will that be able to take it? So those are the questions you need to ask before you uh, get a boot. There's quite a few times what you do is you take your boot and then you twist and turn it and see how much it can take. Uh, I mean, ideally, the motocross boots are good for most of them, the MX boot, but then you can't ride them with uh, even a even a uh, adventure bike. So you've got to figure that part of it. There's, there's a lot of options in the market. Twist and turn, I think that's the most important thing. And again, the, the, the most protection, I believe, has to be your impact on your shin and your ankle. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a trip that we have done. Uh, yeah, super boots, these are the prime ones that took us that were there. Uh, waterproofing, amazing. Uh, never had an issue with the uh, falls. Also, it kept your ankle in place. Yeah. But uh, will these stickers save you uh, on the water? If you are sitting around the swimming pool and you are sliding, yeah. so will it protect? So I wouldn't speed on these boots. <laughs> they're very not. They're not the right boots that I would speed on. Uh, for the purpose, boots are made for the purpose. I cannot think of telling you and answering your question by saying that listen, yeah, there's an all proof boot that you can wear. You know, I can go to a coffee shop where where these boots fall and I might, you know, there might be an impact. So I can't say that, but yeah, in, for, the, for the business, these no, are... No, 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 why I ask you the question? Because I use spectators yeah. and uh, people use it for off-road. I use it for all purposes. Whenever I ride a tiger uh, over the city, I use the tech -tech. So you won't see anybody using tech -tech for 20 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours. Sometimes it's not easy, but once you are used to it, so I just wanted to correct my uh, question that uh, whether I'm doing it, is it uh, right or wrong? Okay, so I'll go back to the first slide that you were talking. Protection gear is to mitigate that risk. It is not to, it doesn't eliminate that risk. I know people who use the tech uh, and fallen, got stuck in between two, uh, you know, two stones, the ankle is gone. Happens. So it reduces the risk, it doesn't eliminate the risk, that's all. So that's protective gear for you. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's got, you've got to figure out what can you know, reduce that risk and that's what you do when you buy gear. Sure, gloves, uh, please don't wear them to do that. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> so then the first thing is uh, your palm, I mean, gin, I think it's just, it's a mental thing where the first thing you want to do is save yourself by putting your hand up. So, first thing, uh, palms uh, are the first, you need to have most amount of protection around your palms. Again, you know, someone can tell me, listen, I always fall on the side, I've broken my finger. Again, reducing the risk. But, uh, I mean, uh, I the same problem, whenever I go for off road, I use the plant bonded type glue. Because I have a feeling that whenever I fall, it is more safe, more safe. Huh? Uh, now you will be seeing that uh, fly gloves, knee gloves, uh, they are very thin actually, but I don't think that they will save the impact. Sure, I, I completely agree with you. But you, I mean, if I was to answer you after uh, yearly uh, professional riders, the first thing they tell you is listen, you gotta, you got to find out how you're going to fall. So you know, so you've got to you've got to anticipate the fall, and you've got to decide how you're going to fall. Uh, that is something that you learn over time, and that's why the layered ones that you're talking about, the MX gloves that happen, uh, it can save you. Uh, but you've got to be at that level to understand that you know I don't need this. But what I'm trying to do is exactly what uh, you need to have your armors at the right place uh, for your gloves. First, you 
got to figure out what you need. You know, you got to figure out what level you are at, and you know, maybe I'm the guy who will always follow my path. Okay. So, what you mentioned is a perfect example of uh, selection gear, selecting gear for competitive versus non-competitive value. So, the Iliad or uh, the thin gloves that you mentioned. Why do professional riders in motocross applications uh, choose to wear those very thin gloves? Is to maximize their control over the motorcycle. Right? That's their primary, their uh, first priority is to maximize control over the motorcycle. Right? Also, because they are in a super competitive sport, every uh, gram of weight that they add on their body is some percentage of performance loss. So they, they, they try to keep their gear as light as possible. And also, when uh, when you talk about uh, you know supercross or motocross tracks, which are purpose built for that particular race, <coughs> the mud that they use does not have any stones. It's filtered mud. It is specifically uh, curated for that application. So the impact that they are going to have is not going to be abrasion. It's not going to be a slide. They are going to hit mud, and they are willing to take the risk of getting injured if they fall, because in 9 out of 10 cases, they will not fall and they want to maximize control, they want to maximize performance. But when people like you and me go off-road, that is not our priority. Our priority is protection. Right? So, it will be better if we choose abrasion impact protection over performance. So, I think what you are doing is right for yourself. Yeah, yeah answer. So, now if we need your control, so basically what you need, the purpose, that's what you are. Great, helmets. I think uh, I'm the wrong person to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> you should be talking about this. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, some research that we have done, and 45% uh, of it is uh, injuries, is face and chin. So, that's why a full face helmet comes in handy. Uh, helmets have a fire life. A lot of people debate, but uh, that's something that I picked up from a few manufacturers, so I took up Alai, Shoei, and so And that's what we have to come up with. Uh, suppose to display the energy in a crash, that's an interesting one. People think that this is a plastic case, and this is going to help me, you know, it'll help my head because it's not going to impact. But the real purpose of it is when the impact, when the impact happens, it's supposed to display it while, before it touches your, you know, your, your brain or your, your head. Uh, the other thing is something that I learned from uh, watching MotoGP was their helmets are not to dissipate the energy but to help them uh, slide. So that's uh, again purpose built. Uh, in that picture you see MX uh, motocross uh, helmets. You can't ride with those peaks. Some of them you cannot ride with those peaks uh, riding a touring bike. So you've got to be wary about such things, aerodynamics, uh, the fit. Uh, so I'm going to go through a few of those so that it uh, doesn't get the right certifications. Uh, a lot of people argue still the fact that uh, if I buy an Alai, which is going to cost me 75,000 rupees, it's safer than buying probably a Scorpio, which is 10,000. But you know, the, the reason there's certifications is because those things are drawn through those certifications. And a lot of people will argue, what you're paying for is, is something that I believe is comfort, uh, better graphics, aerodynamics, uh, the brand. So those are the things that you've got to be, uh, if you believe in that, just put your money there. But I think certifications are important, so certifications go through biggest testing, so you can you can trust those certifications and buy elements as per se. Uh, how much to pay? Again, I mean I think those those are those are still ECE and dot. They have all the certifications that are needed that an ally will have. So if you are on a budget, still go for the certification. That's all I said. You can pay as much as you want, good stuff. Uh, a lot of people will tell me also, hey, listen, it's your brain, you should be spending, you know, a lakh. Fine, good, you know, you have the money, uh, and you put it in. So, good, but your certification is important, that's all I'm trying to tell you. Uh, again, shape of size, size is important. There's, I mean, 50 grams makes a very big difference. Like, if it comes down to 1,300, 1,350, 1,400 grams, you're sitting there and you're going to be paying that money to get that 50, but it does make a big difference to how it fits. So yeah, weight, noise, uh, aerodynamics, a lot of people say the AGVs sound noisier than the RIs and the RIs are so quiet. It does make a difference. You can't try them on, but you can ask your friend if he has the same thing, you know, how, you know, these are the things that you, that, that is a deal. Uh, I think these people were laughing because I did have an accident.
myself without a helmet and uh, it did put me out for six months. Uh, just a small hemorrhage, but uh, it did, but there is, there is an importance, which I believe you can, you can, you can actually, uh, I mean, if you've, if you've had a fall, I mean, in some part, of, uh, some other part of your body, it's fine, but I think the head is, is very important. Uh, a, lot, a lot of things can go wrong out there, so what do we get? Yeah, uh, so that's helmets. So I had a question, helmets. I heard from two people, so I have read casualties kept over here and as a whole. So the impact taking ability of helmet reduces, though it's a casual from, from this test to the floor. So is it true or can you just share some more element? Very interesting. The other thing was why you are, there's no, there's no serious so question. Casually happens from a lot of people, like you know you have kept it somewhere in falls. People yeah. like me have not happened. So that might be Yeah, yeah I know. There's a, there's a lot of falls. I'll go a little more serious on that one. Um, I've had a fall, okay, and I've got up and everything looks okay. The helmet looks fine. Can I use that helmet again? So, you, so that's the most serious question, but there are people who still use that helmet because, and I might not use it again, but I don't know what has happened to the helmet inside. I don't know what has happened to the, you know, I cannot open the whole thing out, see what has happened to it. And that's the biggest reason they tell you to listen to it. But I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't. I mean, personally, if it fell from a table, I'll be like, okay, it's fine. That's its job. But uh, I don't know. This. If I was to question the, uh, the technology that's involved in helmets today, you know, we have come a really long way. But you still see people uh, in professional sports, which is probably where it comes down to, helmets come down to, you know, all that research comes from professional sports into street riding and all that. I mean, I can give you an example of CS approach. He's had a fall, and he's had great injuries, even after wearing the best of the best. Yeah. So, again, protection is back to the same. You know, it will not stop you. But you're like, I, uh, to answer your question, uh, I don't have a right answer. That's for sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't wear it because it's falling out of the thing. Uh, again, for the fact that I don't do professional sports with that helmet, I don't, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go great next speeds. Uh, with that helmet and take a chance. So I don't have that answer. If there's somebody who can answer that. Uh, I can say that. <coughs> so uh, initially, just like the topic here, I used to have a lot of problem finding a helmet. And coincidentally, I learned that uh, in some brands, extra small and in some brands, small fits. So uh, until I could find again those sizes, I was wearing something as akin to just a shell falling on my head. And, you know, it, it bobbles. So I gave, when I started writing, I gave priority to him. Uh, so I was reading up and stuff, and you know that it has to pinch your, it should, there should be resistance when you try to take it off. That was one. It will feel uncomfortable at first, but then now, if I don't have that, I feel like I'm missing something. And very important, as you said, that you know, we just slip it on, sometimes we forget. I've had one or two instances, the moment I realize I go on the left and I fasten it. It's just a sense of security that you fasten your helmet because there's no point and in a high impact it will actually fly off. Um, in two instances, so I've had a couple of falls, but two instances that stay, that stay in my mind are, uh, I was riding in Rajmachi, there was a good news or something. And literally, it must have been like I was going down a sandbank, and there was there were some bikes, so I was trying not to uh, try to avoid going too fast into them. And I was literally like maybe five, maximum ten kilometers, slowly, slowly, slowly. Uh, you know, inexperienced, I applied the front brake, and from a standstill position, I fell. The fall was very soft. The problem is that in the sand there was a sharp rock, and my head hit it, and there was such a that impact, you know, and it just it hit, and I could feel that swing, like something here. And then uh, I used to immediately get up, but when I tried to get up, I fell again. And uh, of course, people were there and they asked me wait, so I waited. And then that, that uh, impact pain or whatever that sensation was, it went away. Uh, I after that was wondering whether I should retire that helmet or not. So I wore it a little bit for street riding, but whenever I, before I bought a proper big helmet and everything, um, I would not wear that helmet off-road anymore. Because I knew that I, if I'm going to get into a sticky situation, I don't know what the condition of the shell is. I used it a little bit on the, on the highway and stuff, but there was a doubt. And uh, more recently, last year in August or something, I had a very, very, very bad crash on the highway. One day there was a uh, sort of a cloudburst, unpredictable weather. 
it was pure coincidence that day I decided to wear a full face helmet. And uh, it was night time, I think 9 o'clock, the rain, I was on the scooter and there were parts of the highway where there's a catchment area and my bike went into it, hit a pothole and flipped. Mm -hmm. And I crashed, like dragging myself right across the highway. At the time I just, I was wearing actually this jacket, literally this jacket, I was not, you know, and uh, I had uh, there was like uh, abrasion and stuff like that. I'm very shocked I did not break my arm or something. But when I came home, I saw that my entire side and chin, everything had proper impact to this. I immediately retired the helmet. I, I will not touch it again. So just uh, again, from my experience, it was just that those incidents that don't instill confidence in me anymore that I should wear that helmet again. So um, uh, Abhijit and Priyanka have taken us through multiple categories of uh, protective gear. And whenever one goes to buy a new gear, there is typically this protection in shoulder, elbow, back, sometimes in chest, sometimes here. If you see the protector inside, I don't know how many of you guys have done this, maybe you can do it uh, now after the presentation, but um, on the inside of the protector you will see a table and that is the C certification table, right? Uh, sometimes you will see that table um, on the inside of the jacket. Right? So what is the difference between the two? What is the difference between a CE certified part and a CE certified product? So basically a CE certified, if a product is using a CE certified part, the certification is limited to only that part. It, the, the, uh, the, product, the entire product is not CE certified. Okay? So um, this is an example of the two. So basically, there are some gloves that will use a CE certified knuckle protector versus there will be some gloves where the entire glove as a finished product is CE certified. Yeah? And um, you said before that the, the gloves here are the finished product is CE certified. Yeah. So uh, you can take a look at a few examples of product, uh, gloves where the entire glove as a product, finished product is CE certified. Yeah? So before we can understand whether the product or the part is a CE certified, we need to understand, we need to learn how to read a CE, right? Because it looks simple, but uh, it's in code, so we need to decode. So it's very simple. If it's a, if you see this uh, symbol on it, then and only then is it a product or a part which is certified for application in motorcycle. Okay? Because the uh, the organization or the institution that certifies products. Uh, certify, uh, create standards under which products are certified uh, also create similar standards for other sports and other industries right so the first thing that you need to notice is whether a symbol that looks like a, a motorcyclist is there or if the, the symbol is something else if the symbol is something else it might be protective but that product or that part is not certified for use in motorcycle so that's one point number two is split into two parts where you will see a letter or two letters and then on the right you will see type A or type B okay so the first letter or letters is basically denoting the uh, the limb or the part of your body for which specifically that part is certified okay so if you if you re uh, remove a, a protector from the shoulder of your jacket it should say S and nothing else okay similarly for elbow is E back is FB, then uh, here you will see K plus L. So K plus L is a protector that uh, protects, is certified to protect your knee plus your shin. Then why doesn't it say K plus S? Because S is already reserved for shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's simple and it's limited. So I mean, you don't have to remember this, you just need to uh, Google it to really understand if it's if a particular protector is certified for use in that particular part of your body or not. And then type A and type B basically uh, tells you the um, the area that it covers. Okay. So type A is reduced coverage and type B is maximum coverage possible for that particular part. So um, why why is there type A? Type A is there typically. Type A is for special applications like, for example, uh, use for um, jackets designed for women. 
which as a complete product are very small in size. Okay, they might uh, an M for women might be smaller than an M for men. Yeah, uh, it also might be for use in really small sizes, maybe XS or S. Okay, so if your size XL jacket is coming with a type A protector, then it might be because of um, commerce reasons and not because it's intended for that use. Okay, so that's another thing that you can check. Um, then point number three is T minus and T plus. Okay, most of the times you will. Uh, so why is this important? This is important because. Um, in India, we are either a very hot country, or we are either or we are a very cold country. And if um, if I go for a ride from Pune to the mountains and back, then in a period of let's say 30 days, I am going to experience all seasons that India has to summer, winter, monsoon. Yeah, um, and then I will go through temperatures of 40 plus, right up to a possibility if I go to extremes of uh, Ladakh or Spiti or Zanskar, maybe even minus uh, temperatures. So it's important that the protection that we uh, choose to wear has T plus and T minus certification, which is T minus is cold temperature impact test passed and T plus is hot temperature impact test passed. What is, what is this basically telling you is that the protector will continue to uh, absorb the same level of impact in hot or cold temperatures, right? If a protector does not have this, let's say T minus, then it means that um, this protector might lose its efficiency in cold temperatures. Yeah. Then um, point number four, uh, we're done. Or point number five is performance level. So there is C level one, this C level two, is there C level three? What do, you, what do you guys think? Is there C level 3? Yes. Yes, no. Yes. There is C level 3, but not in motorcycling applications. Okay? So if anyone is claiming that they have a protector which is made for motorcycling and is C level 3, that's just not possible. Okay? So C level 1 is the minimum acceptable protection that you should choose and C level 2 is the maximum possible protection that you can have. Yeah? So that's the five parts and underneath that you will see a um, alpha numeric code which is the standard under which that particular protector has been certified. So if you want to know more about um, what are the impact levels, uh, what, is, what are the temperature ranges for which that particular protector has been certified, then you can go to that you, know, and you can Google it and you can find literature on it. And uh, you can understand that, uh, you can understand what is the level of protection that you are choosing. I think you have covered that whole Yeah, so this is like a summary slide. Uh, so what does protective gear actually protect you from? Impact and abrasion is the most uh, expected answer. Uh, but it's also protecting you from elements, right? So, uh, waterproof and breathable membranes like gold legs. Um, warm liners meant for winter. Also, um, mesh jackets which maximize ventilation are either giving you the uh, ventilation that you need or protecting you from elements when you don't, when you want to shut yourself out. Then fatigue. So, I mean, if you wear a, a, a cotton jacket or a raincoat and uh, right, let's say just at the speed of 80 for an hour, you will be terribly tired because you are, the entire jacket is going to flap in the wind and it's going to drag your body with it. Right? But good protective gear is designed to not puff up, puff up um, at high speeds, number one. Um, also, when you pick up a jacket in your hand, it feels heavy. But when you wear it, when you cinch all the girth adjustments which are given, when you put it, put, put them snug, right? When you close all the fasteners, the jacket suddenly stops feeling that way. Because good protective gear is designed so that the weight of the jacket is distributed across uh, across your body, and you don't feel fatigued because of weight. Uh, like we covered before, it will protect you from low visibility. It will make sure that uh, 
even though we are the smallest fish in the pond as two wheelers, uh, two wheeler riders, uh, we will still remain visible to other larger vehicles at day or at night. And lastly, it will uh, protect you from abnormal rotation of joints, which is what uh, we covered when we spoke about the escape oil protection. So, yeah. I think I'll go back to the fatigue part. It's something that I also uh, learned was I used to wear the same gear on a classic bike. But I, when I started wearing the same gear on an adventure bike, I realized the wind protection is so much that there would be no, there would be air here, and there's no air here. So all our gear used to have all the vents somewhere here, and there's no vents on this side. So you just be sitting there going, there's no air passing through, you know, this part of your body at all. So you've got to, uh, again, you've got to make that choice by being on that bike and figuring out what it is. Uh, I think asking fellow, you know, your fellow riders who, who have that bike and seeing what kind of, you know, how is that get uh, working for you. I mean, I actually, uh, I actually had to, I had to tell somebody that listen, I wish, I wish I had so much of a mesh on my left uh, on this side of it so that there would be air circulation from this side. There are no air circulation going on on the other side. So yeah, every gear is meant for that and we try to make the right choice. Yeah, but uh, you will see these two jackets. This is slightly shorter, this is longer. Yeah. Um, if you wear this on a motorcycle that requires you to be in a tucked in position, you are going to have about four inches of the shoulder area which will bunch up there. Right? This is that this is what uh, that is designed for. Right? So this does not have an extra length of material. Yeah. So this is designed to be used in a tucked in position. This is designed to be used in a upright right. Yeah. So irrespective, and they are completely two material, different materials. I am not talking about the materials. You can have a jacket which is uh, designed for riding in a tucked in position, which is made out of mesh. And you can imagine you have a two-way jacket which is made out of leather, though that's not the material of choice for the me. But I am saying it's not about the material, it's about the form factor. Yeah. So it's not about the bike that you ride, but about the position, the riding position that you are in. Um, and another thing is, typically you will see that motorcycles that require you to be in a tucked position, you will see this hard side on the shoulder of that. Because you are more likely to lean into the curve when you are riding in a tucked position. You will not see that on a two -way. So these are the differences which, um, you know, you will find features that are purpose built for a specific riding position. So it's not about the bike or the type of bike, it's about the riding position that you are in. Yes, <laughs> 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 uh, is, it product, uh, is it necessary to check the parts for the C certified product as well? Like in case of a jacket, if the no, if, if, a, if the claim of a particular product is that the entire product is C certified, and if it has the right uh, standard mentioned under it, then you can safely assume that each part also passes that level of certification. I mean, you'd be surprised. Ethio before was, uh, before it came to jackets, uh, the U.S. Army, the NFL helmets, they would have the Ethio along there, mm -hmm. and that's where it came out. That's where it originated, and then it came down to jackets, and uh, this is where it is. I mean, it's a magic chemical. If you read about it, it's an amazing. Uh, material that they have discovered. But yeah, I think uh, this, this should be ended. It is not an ad for the next piece. <laughs> <laughs>